What's up, guys? How are you? Welcome into a Monday morning episode. It is the Daily Juice Podcast. My name is Matt Perrault. How are you? Follow me across all socials at Sports Talk Matt. And this podcast is always being brought to you by OmahaSteaks.com. They have a customized URL for us. It's OmahaSteaks.com slash juice. Subscriptions now available. If you go and take advantage, you get free burgers for life and 10% off everything you buy at OmahaSteaks.com. 100% money back guarantee. OmahaSteaks.com slash juice to go there. All right, losing week. I cannot get an NBA bet right to save my life. I mean, it is absolutely red X season and we are done. I am done with the NBA until the playoffs. Okay. I'm going to bet NBA player props. We'll get in with that. If Wemba Yama had hit one more three, he would have hit the three point prop and he would have hit the, the points prop. He ended up with 22 points. We bet over 23 and a half and one for three instead of two. He hit one. I would like, by the way, I mean, his next game, I would bet that. I mean, I think that's something to watch, okay? It didn't hit yesterday, but it's a it's something to take a look at. Over on the points and over on the three th- on the three-pointers for Victor Wembanyama with the Spurs. But Spurs got killed, started the Rockets, so that bet missed. But we, only, we lost one unit. It was two half-unit plays, both at plus money. So we lost that. Basketball was a bummer. Nebraska, right. We got all we got right was the Huskers. One and one in college basketball. The Creighton game, it's another game where I made a pretty good case for taking the dog, but I bet on the Jays. I really did think Creighton was going to win that game. It was a bad bet by my by me. I really thought that their threes would fall and they had open looks all over the place. But they didn't go down. And when they are missing threes, they just really have a hard time. I mean, they are literally a make or miss team. I know people want to call them mediocre or overrated. The the word overrated to me in college basketball is really funny because in order for someone to be overrated, you have to trust that the people doing the ratings know what they're talking about. And they really don't. Like, for instance, Wake Forest over the weekend beat Duke. Wake Forest was favored at home to beat Duke, yet Duke had the little number next to their name. So there was a court storm. The bookies, the bettors, the people who were watching college basketball, they knew Wake Forest was live to win that game. That's why they were favored. But it's an upset. Is it really an upset if you're favored at home? I mean, who who really knew there, right? The Chiefs were dogs in every game in the playoffs. In every game. Who, who knew, right? Like, who's overrated in college basketball, really? I mean, the Jays were favored, okay? And you can say that they lost, and that's, you know, they beat UConn, and they lose. There is a really interesting trend going on with teams that have a big win, and then the very next game, they're losing. Like, big win, you're all pumping your chest out, UConn kills Marquette, and then Creighton kills UConn, and then Creighton gets killed by St. John's, and... I mean, they beat the number one team in the country by 19, and they lost on the road to St. John's unranked by 14. That is college basketball this year. It is an insane, wild ride. Fun to watch. I've done pretty good betting on it. I'm now, what, um, 58 and 44 in college basketball? That's pretty good. Exact opposite in the NBA. It's even worse than the NBA. I can't, I mean, it's just pathetic. So today, we're doing two college basketball bets, obviously and one NHL play to give you guys. So let's start in college basketball, and let's start with Miami against North Carolina. Number is 14. There is no way I'm laying this, all right? I think Carolina kills them, but there's no way I'm laying this. Okay, the total is 145, 140, 154 and a half, okay? This has been pretty much an under team. Both teams have been under teams. In conference, 11 and 5, North Carolina to the under. Miami, 11-6 to the under in conference play. But Carolina is 7-4-1 ATS at home, and they've been hot at home. Against Vatek, total was 151, went over by 26 points. At home against Clemson, it was 154, went over by two points. At Duke, one, or sorry, at home against Duke, 152.5, went over by 24.5 points. Since we started February, three home games, three overs for North Carolina. On the flip side, 
on the road, the last road game for Miami, that it was 149 and a half at Boston College. Game went under, went over by 12 and a half points. Against Clemson, though, 152. Game went under by 15 points against Virginia. You can throw that out because Virginia, every game goes under for Virginia. Like we know, they scored 38 points in that game against Virginia. NC State, it was 155 on the road. It went under by 13 points. This is going to have to be done by Carolina, okay? There are not team totals that are out at the moment, at least when I looked a second ago. There was not. When I looked to bet, there were no team totals. You can bet team totals for North Carolina and just say, I don't want to play around with Miami here. I don't trust Miami. And I'd rather, yeah, there's no, there's nothing up at the moment for team totals. So, you know, if you find a team total you like, I don't mind that play at all from a team total perspective, but I bet overnight and you don't normally see overnight team totals in college basketball. So I have to bet over, over 154 and a half. Again, if you want to bet team total North Carolina, let's see what it winds up being, but it's probably going to be somewhere around... I don't know, 82, 83 would be my guess. And I like the over there for North Carolina, team total over. But let's hope that they score in the 90s and Miami contributes a little bit and gets, you know, to 70. If we get 70 points out of Miami, we're going over. Like, that. that's kind of my, my barometer here. We hit our last two total bets. Let's do another one. North Carolina and Miami over 154 and a half for a half a, sorry, for a full unit, 1.1 units. Ken Palm has this at 154, so it's right there. So not a lot of margin there, but pace of play. Miami is 120th in pace of play this year. That's not awful from an over perspective. North Carolina is 45th. They like to play fast, in particular at home, where they've been pretty good. Only one home loss all year. That was to Clemson, so done a pretty good job here. I do expect them to win the game. Ken Palm has it as a 14-point win. I'm not going to touch the, the side over 154.5 for 1.1 units. Second bet in college basketball. I'm going back to Baylor. Baylor's on the road at TCU. Ken Palm has this as a one-point loss for Baylor. Total is 2.5, or sides 2.5. TCU favored. Opened at 3, bet down at 2.5. Look, back-to-back losses for Baylor. If they hit the free throw at the end of regulation... We cover our bet, but also Baylor wins the game outright, and they beat Houston. Number one team in the country, according to Ken Palm. Didn't happen. They lost in overtime, 82-76. to 76. These teams played back on the 27th of January. Triple overtime loss to TCU for Baylor. Triple overtime loss. At the time, their first home loss, or only home loss, was to TCU in triple overtime, 105-102. to 102. Kansas State beat them. Texas beat them. Both on the road. They played TCU and they lost three in a row. Only time all year long Baylor has lost three in a row. They lost to BYU on the road in their last home game, last road game. They lost in overtime to Houston. I don't think history repeats itself here. They may lose the game, but I like Baylor at plus two and a half. Yes, I know we just were on Baylor and they burned us, but... Baylor on the road this year is 7-4-1 ATS. I know that TCU has covered four games in a row, and they're 9-5 at home. Cincinnati laying 5.5 at home, one by 18. That's a bad basketball team. At home against West Virginia, laying 13, one by 16. Whole, uh, bad basketball team. Against Texas, though, they laid 4.5. They lost by 11. They were laying 4 against Texas Tech. They won by 7. At home against Iowa State, they were laying five. They lost by one. They beat Houston. That was the big one when TCU beat Houston back in the beginning part of the season. Big home win there. Catching three, they won by one. This is a team that's lost three of five. They have got to get a big win. They need a road win like this over a tough TCU team. I think Baylor can win the game outright, but I'm going to take the two and a half points here. Baylor plus two and a half for 1.1 units. All right. Two college basketball bets for us here on a Monday over North Carolina, Miami, 154 and a half taking Baylor plus two and a half for 1.1 units. Now hockey play. The Dallas stars have Jake Ottinger going in that tonight. They are at home against the New York Islanders. The numbers are quite 
interesting, ridiculous even here. Over the last 10 games on the road for the Islanders, they haven't been a machine, but they're 4-4-1, four, four, and one, sorry, 4-4-2 four, four, and two, flat to the over or the under. Where this game gets interesting is that Dallas at home is 8-2 and two to the over over their last 10 games at home. Now, last five, they're 3-2, and two, but it's still 3-2. and two. Tied for the second best road record to the over over the last five games at home. On the road for the Islanders, they're three and two over their last five games. The total is six. Now we're laying 122 juice here at DraftKings, but I think this game is going to go over. Here's why. Jay Gottinger at home has a 3.28 goals against average. He's nine, five, zero, and two. But much different at home, Jay Gottinger, than he is on the road. Last game against Edmonton, 4-3. Gave up four goals and lost at home against uh, Carolina, 4-2. Gave up two goals. At home against Washington, 5-4. Gave up four goals. Home against Anaheim, 4-3. Gave up three goals. Sensing the trend here for Jay Gottinger, these games are getting high scoring with him in net. Now he's giving up goals, but Dallas is also scoring goals. Sorokin's in net, allegedly, reportedly, for the Islanders. He, much like Ottinger, is worse on the road where this game's going to be played for the Islanders. 3.46 goals against average, 6-8-0-3. and eight and zero and three. Has a losing record, Sorokin does, on the road. Recently, for road trips against Pittsburgh, 5-4 win in overtime. On the road against Toronto, 3-2. On the road against Chicago, 4-3. On the road against Win- Winnipeg, 4-2. 5 nothing. he gave up three goals and got yanked against Minnesota. Game didn't go over, but they gave up five goals. Back on the 13th of January was a 3-1 loss. These guys play up-tempo games. They give up goals. Sorokin gives up goals. Ottinger gives up goals. Total is six at DraftKings, betting over Dallas and the Islanders tonight, over six for 1.22 units. Okay. Three bets for us here in on a Monday to start the week. Down 2.9 units last week, so that's not good. Let's see if we can bounce back here, see if we can win back the three units we lost last week, and see if we can get back on the track here to get a winning week. Again, over 154.5 North Carolina. We're taking the 2.5 points with Baylor, plus 2.5 on the road at TCU, and over six goals, Dallas and the Islanders. At minus 122. My name is Matt Peralt. Follow me across all socials at Sports Talk Matt every morning. Deal Juice Podcast, always being brought to you by OmahaStakes.com. 